The terror of the woods is no more. My innocence gone. I sit before you, no longer a noob. But a hunter for the Anjanath has been slain. There we go. Oh, we did it. Oh. Pidgey hunts. All right, before we get into this journal, I have to ask, is there such thing as a monster hunter hangover? Because I went on five hunts in the last stream, five like new monster hunts. And the next day I felt so groggy. I, I swear to you, I felt like I had a hangover. It, I just couldn't focus on anything. I didn't sleep well. I had like a dry mouth. It was not pleasant. So I don't know if there's such thing as too much monster hunter, but I might've done it. So the last stream, we focused a lot on making progress by killing monsters. And of course, we finally got our revenge and our, our rematch with Anjanath, which sit down because I've got so much excitement to share with you. That was a fight that I will remember for the rest of my life. But first, let's talk about the other monsters that came before that, starting with Puke Puke, which I know that's not, it's like Puke Puke. Oh, I get it because he pukes. Um, first fight was that I was a little bit worried because now this you know the other two were were fairly straightforward now I knew we were adding the element of poison to this fight and I was a little bit nervous um luckily I had the antidotes I got uh, the radial menu set up with antidotes everyone helped me to like there, there was two types of antidotes that I needed to set up uh but otherwise the fight went pretty good also throughout all of these fights so the last stream I went full-on switch axe uh it felt good when I did the grind stream last week and now I just really wanted to uh, focus on getting much better with that weapon and fighting monsters with the Switch Axe. So I did all of that with that and it worked out pretty good. The Switch Axe is good. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Um, so the Puke Puke fight was pretty good except for the poison. It was a fairly easy monster. It was pretty much just like move to the side, avoid when it vomits everywhere. We got its tail down. Uh, overall, very natural progression fight compared to the Great Jagras and the for lack of a better name. I'm just going to call him the what up bird because I don't remember his name. I just remember chat always going, what up bird, what up bird? Or I think they just say what up. I forget what it goes. So we're going to call it what up bird. The armor set of the Puke Puke, I think is one of my favorites so far at that point. It, it has like a little bit of a samurai like type armor uh, feel to it, which I love. So the Puke Puke armor at that point, I really wanted to just get that whole set. But we don't grind on Thursdays, we go to the next monster, which leads us to, what was the, oh, before we went to the next monster, I got to discover the best kind of quest, which is actually the worst kind of quest. I don't know if Capcom has a little bit of humor in their game, but the best kind of quest has you following this cart that's getting pushed through a whole new environment, which that's exciting. We've unlocked a new environment to explore. I haven't explored it yet. Uh, walking with the handler and the scientist pushing this cart, was not fun. That was just boring. I ran into a not a Rathalos. I think it's like a female Rathalos. It looked like a Rathalos, but it was not red. Uh, and I was supposed to like distract it with rocks and I accidentally hit it with a rock, which freaked me out because then it got enraged and was like breathing fire at me and making loud noises. I'm just like, wagon, get out of here. Uh, and then we just like booked it out of the cave and everything was good. Then there was a Cactuar which surprised me because Cactuar's, you know, I played a lot of Final Fantasy games. Cactuar is a Square Enix property. What is a Cactuar doing in a Capcom game? It was so mind boggling. I'm like, what is that doing here? And then everyone was like, kick it, kick it, which I'm sure means something bad's gonna happen if I kick it. We were on a mission to do something. Anyways, I think I was in the middle of the fight with the Baroth, so I did not end up kicking it, but I promise you all the next time I see a Cactuar, we're gonna kick it. I found a mini Cactuar. We caught that. It's now our pet. It's my favorite in the room. It moves around everywhere. It's fun. Don't pet it. It will prick you. Uh, the Baroth fight was really interesting. Uh, also known as the, I guess, the like Choo Choo fight. Pretty straightforward. Uh, he pretty much just like rams towards you, dodge, keep hacking away at his sides when he like kind of leans back and goes into the ground and is about to like headbutt the ground. Just get out of the way. He's slow enough and he projects his, his movements enough. This was a fairly easy fight. I love the, f the fact that you can like chip away at his mud armor. Um, this one really didn't stress me out too much. It feels a lot like fights I've seen in other games. Uh, because there's so much projection, I'm like, okay, he's just going to come and ram at me. I think he hit me a few times just from 
me being not that experienced. But uh, otherwise, fairly straightforward. That was a fun fight. I enjoyed it. I think that was probably one of my favorite fights at that point. Now, the armor looks a little weird. The armor is like a pumpkin rook. It literally looks like a chess piece painted orange. I don't like it. It's very unique. It's very cool, but I'm never going to wear this. So as much as I like to fight the Baroth, we're probably not going to be using that armor anytime soon. Uh, Story-wise, in this chapter, I also got to meet a guy from the first fleet, which it just goes to show you how much fun the hunts are, because anytime I get like lore at this point, I don't even absorb it. I can't even tell you what this guy uh, told me and what the whole lore is about, because I was just still on a rush from killing a Baroth and this guy was kind of like moody and bringing down the whole like mood in the room and I'm just like, okay, why are you being so moody? Why am I talking to you? Why are you being this lone wolf? Just come back to camp and let's hunt some monsters together. Like, what are you doing here? So uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to care about the story by the end of this because I'm already like, if you remember on the first uh, when I first started playing, I was like, oh, cool. There's a lot of lore here. Uh, I'm excited. And I have to tell you, I've, ever since like the Great Jagras, I don't really care too much about the lore so maybe we're just gonna keep killing monsters i think that's that's the real hook of the game now isn't it uh next up we met the first monster that i absolutely despised fighting i don't know how to pronounce this it's called like the oh man jai jairu J oh I, I really don't know how to do this jairu totus something like it's the big fish monster it's basically the Baroth if you put it in water. And what a garbage fight. I really don't like it because you're like slothing through mud. It's swimming around. It's jumping out at you. It has that whole mud mechanic where you can like break parts off the mud armor off of it. And as much as I hate it, I, I know why it's in the game. I can tell from a design perspective. I'm no game designer, but I can tell that this fight is there to teach new players Oh, you better know how to like you better not just be hacking and slashing your way through this game because this fight requires a lot more precision it intentionally slows you down so that you are less likely to uh dodge out of out of the way through sheer luck and so the the fight makes sense in the progression of teaching the player how to play but it's a really not fun fight because you are just not moving fast. The the character is underground most of the time. It's just really not interesting. Anyways, we killed him. And the good side is his armor actually looks pretty cool. It's got, uh, well, you guys are seeing it on screen. It just looks cool. I mean, look at that. I don't have to describe why I think armor looks cool. So as much as I want that armor, I really don't want to fight this guy again. So I don't know if we're going to get this. But now, let oh no wait we're not Anjanath yet Anjanath yet we have Toby which is I think what you all refer as the flying squirrel so we went and did Toby uh what a beautiful monster like just like a, a nice white blue electrifying monster and now we went from like really slow fight to really fast fight and he was beautiful his armor set let's show up the armor set the armor set is beautiful like just fantastic armor but this fight was quite difficult <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot faster paced than I would have liked. I was playing with a, you know, the switch axe, which was a lot slower of a weapon. And I got electrocuted enough, so now we're also learning about how to dealing with status effects on us as the player. So I got electrocuted so much. I can't say as a player, I walked away from that fight knowing how to avoid being electrocuted. I definitely learned how to use the berries that removes that thing only to be electrocuted immediately after. So I don't think I grasped what that fight was trying to teach me. I just have to say, it's a beautiful monster, beautiful armor. I'm probably going to have to fight it again simply because there's a lot to learn there that I did not learn on the first time. And it's it's just such a fast-paced fight. I don't know if I want to maybe try doing that again with the sword and shield, which is a little bit faster, and see how, how it is with a faster weapon. Oh no, here it is. It's happening. I'm now thinking how to approach monsters again with different weapons strategy. That's how you go down the hole. That's how you go down this black hole. Because now, not only are we are we looking at killing all the monsters, now we're looking at how to optimize monster killing. Ugh. All right. And then the highlight of the stream. So if you were not there, I was about two and a half hours, three hours into the stream. I have to admit, I was actually starting to get tired. We just killed four monsters at this point. 
I'm like, oh, do, do I like keep playing? Do I do grind streams? That seems really like boring. And the chat, we just started getting like some donations and, and the hype train started. I was like, oh no, not another hype train. I was just hearing like hype, 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 hype. I was like, ah, oh, no, we got, we got to do something. We got to like play into this hype train. So I'm like, all right, are we doing Anjanath? Like, are we going back and, and going to fight this thing that destroyed us last week? And then that got everybody on board the hype train. And we got this hype train to level five again. And I was like, do it, Anjanath. So I'm like, all right, we're going to go in. We're going to like, the hype train boosts me up. It's like my own hunter buff. I'm like, we're going to go back and we're going to spank this dinosaur. So everyone's like, oh, he's going to die right away. Other ha the other half of the chat was like, okay, you got you to get like all these things lined up to be ready. We need like to buff up our armor. We got to get these skills. So I'm like going through the menus. Ten minutes have gone by. My hype levels are dropping. I was like, screw it. I'm not going to prepare for this fight. I'm just going to get drained. We got the hype train. I got the energy. Let's just go in with how we are. Let's see how much I've progressed as a hunter since last week. We're going in. So I went in with my great Jagras sword and whatever you see in the video that I'm wearing. Not no research. I'm like, I just know how to move better now. Let's see what happens. We go into the engine fight. And in the first opening, like that adrenaline was working so well because I'm just like dodging all his attacks and just like smashing into him. And he's about to like attack me. And I just like wind up the sword and just smack his face and he falls to the ground. And I'm just whipping him with the sword. It felt like I was masterfully like it probably looked like garbage, but it felt like I was masterfully um fighting it but I was on edge the whole time like I was getting hit and I was like getting back up and then like doing like a last minute dodge and smacking him back down and the fight was kind of like pretty evenly matched and the whole chat was like also going crazy that they were tense and stuff and then it like runs away um all of this just kept escalating and getting crazy and just feeding back into my adrenaline and then it starts limping and I'm like oh my god we got Anjanath to limp we're making progress and everyone's going crazy uh and then there's a point where like I knocked it down somehow, and you know, the cutscene of that fight shows that you can bring the boulders down and knock them. And I wanted to do that from the beginning. I was like, how do I do that? And at the point where he fell, somehow I knocked him down. I realized he fell right beneath the boulders. Like, oh my God, now's my chance. How do I do this? So I went and grabbed like the thing and I slingshot and the boulders fell on him and did like hundred plus damage. I'm like, mind blown that I did it. I mounted him a few times right after I like sliced off his tail. Like I was just owning this Anjanath, and it felt so powerful. Like difficulty wall, where are you at? I was flying high, I was getting very cocky. It goes back to its nest, and I'm like, all right, we're gonna finish this fight. I'm just like, I'm gonna like have beaten Anjanath on my first go. Uh, everyone's gonna talk about this, I'm so good. And then he like wakes up, smack, smack, kills me. Just faints, like the, the biggest, deepest no out of my core soul escape because I thought I would have to redo all of that over again. I didn't realize when they say you can have up to three faints, it means you have up to three tries. Um, so the first thing I'm just like, oh no, like I have to refight this thing. The last 20 minutes was all a waste. I gotta redo that again. That's what it feels like playing Castlevania, by the way. So, and then the whole chat's like, no, 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 you got two more faints. You got two more faints, get, get back up. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like running out of camp. They're like, no, no, go back. You gotta eat, you gotta eat, you gotta do all that. I'm like, oh my God, so many things to do. And I'm like, hurry up, he's healing. And I'm just like, woo, so much pressure. Uh, so anyways, I ate. I buffed up, I got all my potions back. We go back into that nest, we start swinging on him, bang, bang, he knocks me down again very quick. And I'm just like, what is going on? It wasn't until after the stream I realized in that nest, you're like on a trampoline. And basically when he's moving or something, he can stun you. So I was getting stunned, but I didn't realize that was happening. And that's why he was getting the best of me. And it's a really like tight cramped area to fight in. So he was destroying me. So now. Now the pressure was up because I was on my last faint. He was so close to dying. I had died so fast on that second one. And now like the chat's just like, all right, go defensive. Stop being greedy. Like I was being greedy at this point. I just want to finish the fight because I'm like, oh, I'm so close. So I go in, he's sleeping. I'm like, all right, here's where we talk about my switch axe training. Before doing this fight, somewhere in the middle of the stream, I went back to the pole. The pole and I, we had a nice time together. I took out the switch axe and we trained and the and the, the community taught me this cool combo where you like um, you spam B and then you convert into your sword and it's like this five six hit combo. I'm like, we're gonna open up with that on the sleeping T-Rex this time. And so I did that and then he died and I won and it, it felt good. And just that whole rush and the whole chat exploded with craziness and it was the four hour mark right at the end of the stream, like there was no better way to end the stream. I don't know if I can top that fight. 
you guys are probably laughing because you're like, yeah, there's all these other fights. This was just the first one. Uh, and then, of course, we went back. I saw the armor. And I was like, oh, that is a really nice armor. I want Anjanath all over me because that is my most iconic fight to this point. And so actually, that's what we're doing this weekend. Um, we're actually going to try to grind, farm out the Anjanath armor with the community. And this is the first time I'm trying community hunts. So uh, it could probably be the biggest mess ever. There was a lot of people um, watching on Thursday. We had 700 viewers this time. We broke 700. And coordinating that into a functional logistical uh, stream with multiplayer, it's going to be, it's going to, it's not going to be good. But we're going to try. And the next journal is probably going to be focusing on uh, the experience of multiplayer and what that's like and all of that and whatever we do in the farming. But man, that was a very emotional stream. As you can see, I am fully in this time. I really thought Anjanath was going to be the first wall to discourage me, but it only made me stronger. It just makes me want more of it. So now I guess we're heading out to fight our first Elder Dragon. The, the stage is set. We're, we're getting like this Elder Dragon thing that we saw at the beginning ensnared in a trap. And we're going to be doing that after the grind stream this Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash heyjofficial. You want to check out. We're going in and we're taking out. I think we're taking out the first Elder Dragon. We're going to go play with it. I don't know what we're going to do with it. And uh, I'm also going to learn how to capture and ensnare or just capture and maybe use traps. So we'll see how all that works. Because, yeah, apparently you need traps for Anjanath. I didn't use traps. I just went as a noob and whacked on him. Oh, man. What a ride. What a ride. And we're only... We're only two like major streams into this thing. I'm about 10 hours into my Monster Hunter journey now and lots of emotions. Let me just tell you that. Hopefully I see you on the next one. If you want to watch the whole VOD, as always, it's in the description below. You can watch all of the Twitch streams here on YouTube. They're uploaded as unlisted VODs. You can check those out. And I might do a little quick compilation of the Anjanath fight. I'm looking over it, seeing if it makes sense to do like a really quick fight for you guys that might show up here as well. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next Monster Hunter Journal. And until then, keep it classy.